Okay, section 11, 1 and 11, 2. Um, they go together pretty nicely because we're both they both talk about surface area. And area is a measure of the surface covered by a figure, okay? So most of you are pretty pretty familiar with that. Area has square units. For example, the area may be 12 centimeters squared. And that's a there's a big difference between that and 12 squared centimeters. This right here means uh, 144 linear centimeters. This thing up here means square centimeters, so it covers the surface. We've got several formulas here, obviously. We've got triangle, square, rectangle, many of these you're familiar with. Parallelogram, kite, rhombus, and trapezoid, those are probably new ones. And uh, D1 and D2 down here mean diagonals. So for instance, in, in this kite, D1 and D2 are diagonals. So if I have a kite, something like this, my diagonals, remember, are here in blue. That would be D1, that would be D2, or vice versa. Okay, so D1 and D2, isn't that nice? Um, but you guys know what the diagonals of a kite are. Uh, so anyway, that's what the diagonals are. Same with the trapezoid. Um, remember, for a trapezoid, the bases, this would be B1 right here, and B2 down below. Okay, um, so those are the bases. And the height of the trapezoid would be, you know, here in red. That's how tall the trapezoid is. That would be H. And uh, and so each formula has their kind of little, uh, you know, special aspects. But basically, you should be familiar with most of this stuff. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to shut up about this. And let's move on to some examples here. So let me bring up an example or two. or possibly four. Okay, here we go. First one. Um, in this one we have a triangle, all right? So the first thing that I would do is I'd write down the formula for triangle. Area equals one, oops, equals one half base times the height. All right, and in this example, my base of the triangle, that's talking about the actual bottom of the triangle, that is just this piece right here highlighted in blue, that's the base. Okay, so B is 13, and the height of the triangle is 7, it's how tall the triangle is, if you think way back to geometry A, the height of the triangle is 7. So A equals 1 half the base, which is 13, times the height, which is 7, and if you do the math on that, you get that A equals I think 45.5. And if we had units, it would be some sort of units squared um, because it's surface area. Let's move on to the next example. Next one I have a parallelogram. My formula for parallelogram is just base times height. All right, so, and once again, I'm looking at the actual base of the parallelogram, which is 12, and the height is 8. So area equals 12, the base, times the height which is, oops, I'm sorry, which is 8. 12 times 8, A equals 96. Once again, if we had units, it would be square units. And those are pretty straightforward applications of the area formulas. Now, over here, down below, number 1 there, we want to find the value of X. And in this case, I have a parallelogram. Okay, right, so I know that I've got, uh, you know, parallelograms. So my formula is area equals base times height, but in this case, I know the area. I'm given the area. It's 153, so I'm going to put that in there, and I'm looking for the base. Well, I'm sorry, excuse me. I'm looking for the height, and I know the base is 17, so this is my B, and I'm looking for H. H is X in this case, so I'm going to set up my equation and then solve. A is 153 equals the base, which is 17, times the height, which is x, 17x, should be equals. Okay. And uh, if I do the math here, I'm going to do x divided by 17, and divide both sides by 17, divide by 17, and that'll give me x equals, I believe, 9. 
x equals 9. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. And in this one, I've got a parallelogram again. Well, actually, I've got three pieces, right? I've got three shaded pieces. And the way I would approach this is I break this picture into three parts. One part I'm going to call A1. That's going to be this little piece there, that triangle. And then I've got, I would call this parallelogram A2. Okay. And then I would call this last triangle out here, I'd call this A3. And the way we're going to find the area of the whole thing is adding up the, the, the small pieces of the shape. Okay. Um, so this first piece, A1, that's going to be one half the base of the triangle, which is 11. Which is 11 times the height, which is 12. Okay, so that's A1. And A1 will be 66. A1 equals 66. Uh, what are we in inches here? six inches. And since it's surface area, it's inches squared. Okay. All right, let's find A2 now. A2. Well, A2 is a parallelogram and the base of the parallelogram is 22 times the height of the parallelogram, so that's 22 times 12. So A2 equals 22 times 12 which is just 264 all right and I'll try and fit a3 in here a3 is this other small triangle over here the base of that small triangle is 8 inches so that's 1 half times the base which is 8 times the height of the triangle well that height is the same as it is for the parallelogram. The height's always the same. So the height is still 12. Sorry. The height is 12 over here in red. So times 12. And that will give you um, 4 times 12, which is 48. To find the area of the whole thing, I take all three of these things and add it. And I've run out of room. But um, you should get that the area of the whole thing, your final area, equals 66 plus 48 plus 264 which is 378 inches squared. Inches squared. Okay. All right, let's move on to the last uh, four examples there. One moment, please. All right, number one, I've got a trapezoid. I want to find the area of the trapezoid. Well, my formula for trapezoid is A equals one half, the base is added together, times the height. So one half times B1 plus B2 times the height. Okay, so my task then is to identify the different pieces. My height in this one is 10. My base is, it doesn't really matter what I call B1 and B2, so I'll just call the top one B1 here. And I'll call this bottom one B2. Okay, so that's B1, B2, and that's all I need to find the area. So A equals 1 half. The base is added together, so 12 plus 6 times the height, which is 10. And when all is said and done here, you get that A equals 90. A equals 90. All right, straightforward application of the trapezoid formula. Let's do a kite now. My formula for a kite is A is A equals one half the diagonals multiplied together. So one half times D1 times D2. Okay. One half times Z1 times Z2. 
Well, my diagonals is this distance here and this distance here. Well, that is outlined by the kind of, the, let's do this. The distance in blue is 24 and the distance here in red is 13. Okay, so this distance is 13 and the distance in blue is 24. Okay, so that's what those numbers, how they match up. So A equals one half, it doesn't matter what order we name the diagonals, uh, one half times 24 times 13. Okay, one half of 34, or 24 times 13, and that would give me 156. So A equals 156. Okay, let's go on to number 12. Number 12 is a trapezoid once again, except in this trapezoid, I'm given the area and I want to find one of the bases. Okay, so A equals one half, the base is added together, B1 plus B2 times the height. Okay, and I know B1, I know the height, I know I'm looking for B2, and I know the area up here, A, is 187, okay? So let's plug everything in and solve. A is 187, so I've got 187 equals 1 half times the base is added together. Well, that's X plus 6, right? Those are my two bases, X plus 6 times the height, which is 17. Oh, 17. Okay. So now we have to solve, and there's lots of ways that we can solve this. Um, I'm probably going to try and distribute that one half first. So one half multiplied across, so 187 equals one half x. One half times six is plus three. And now, remember, we've got this 17 out here. We can't forget that. So we're going to multiply everything inside there by 17. Okay, actually, let's write that a little bit nicer. Times 17. Okay, so distribute again. 17 times 1 half, 17 times 3. 187 equals half of 17. That's going to be 8.5x. plus 3 times 17, let's see, that's going to be uh, 30 plus 21, is to be 51. Okay. And then we're going to subtract 51, minus 51, and we'll get down to, this is going to be 136, equals 8.5x. And ultimately, you get down to x equals uh, 16, looks like. Okay. x equals 16, and x, remember, that's actually our b2, our second base. Okay. In this next one, we've got a rhombus. So our formula is... Um, a equals one half d1 times d2 or base times height. Well, in this case, I know I'm going to make some space here. In this case, what I know is the diagonal. So I know that this piece is 15. I know that this piece is 15. So this whole diagonal here in blue is 30. And this piece here in red is x. This piece down here is x. So that whole diagonal is 2x. Okay, so if A equals one half times d1 times d2 alright well I know that d1 will put in I'm sorry I know the area I'm given the area is 330 equals one half times d1 well d1 uh, we'll call that red so in red there so that's 2x times right so d 
x plus x is 2x, times in blue, 30. Okay. And let's simplify this. This is going to end up being 330 equals 30x. And if you divide by 30, you get down to x equals uh, 11. Okay. And that's it for sections 12, 1, I'm sorry, 11, 1 and 11, 2. Um, it's just a matter of picking the right formula, plugging the right stuff in.